Hey everyone, I'm Allie Buckman with the Potomac Bead Company and today I'm just going to do a simple kind of refreshing necklace for you working with three strands of glass pearls. We're actually in the Minnesota store getting ready to open tomorrow and filming here so this is going to be one of the items that we put on display right near the glass pearls. It's a good thing if you have friends that aren't into beading and you would like them to get in, have your own bead and wine night party, you can come in. This is a classic nice three style necklace with a fun little twist kind of at the end with the connectors as well as getting them into some simple jewelry making techniques. I'm going to be using some really basic products. What I'm working on is a bead mat here. It's just nice to keep the beads from rolling around. I also have bead stoppers. The bead stoppers you just pull back on the ends in the kids classes. We say that you pull back on Mickey's ears. That's going to open up the bead stopper and you're just going to stick your wire in it. That's going to stop our beads from falling off the end of the wire. I also have two tools and I'm going to pick up a third one. I have a chain nose pliers, I have a wire cutters, and the wire cutters have two sides. They have a flush side and a V side. You want to make sure with your wire to put the flush side down closest to your project. And then I'm also going to pick up a round nose pliers towards the end of the project. Wire-wise, I'm going to be using Beadalon 7 Strand .008. This is a big spool here that we have at the store for people that come to make jewelry. And I actually just cut it apart so we are ready, ready for business and people to come in and make jewelry. And we're also using the Artistic Wire in 20 gauge in silver. I'm using the silver color in both of them, although you really won't see the wire much, but I'm using pewter findings as well as silver plated findings. Finding wise, I am using the silver plated 2x2 two two millimeter crimp beads and I'm going to be using for the three strands, I'm using six of them total, two per strand. And I have some beads, my pearls that I'm using, I have two strands of six millimeter. It would also look nice with four millimeter, six and then eight, or you could even get bigger and do a 14 millimeter strand below. But for this purpose, I'm gonna use the two sixes and the eight. The colors that I've chosen are the brown iris in the six, the champagne in six, and then the brown in the eight millimeter. I say that I've chosen them, but actually Nathan took them off the wall and put them here on the bead mat for me, but he does a nice job of picking colors as well. So those are the colors that we're going with for this necklace. The other connector pieces that I have here are the pewter links, and these are a three to one connector. It can also be used, which is really great for a chandelier, so you can make a matching chandelier style necklace out of these. It goes from three loops to one loop. We sell them in packs of four, and they're really inexpensive, which is also a nice thing, because you can make both your earring and necklace set to match with these connectors. I have also a pewter lobster, and this is a pewter lobster with a flower on it to match the flower of my connectors. They're not the same type of flower, but I'm gonna be making kind of a wild, wild flower field here with the different kinds of flowers that we're using. And then just some daisy spacers. If you are kind of going back and forth what type of beads to buy or you're on a budget, um, daisy spacers and smooth rounds are kind of my always go-to beads. So they're a good thing for people to start with if you do have friends that you wanna get started in jewelry or you'd like to make things and wanna buy some staple items. These are a four millimeter daisy spacer in the pewter that we'll use for the design. So the first thing that I'm going to do is actually get started by pre-cutting my wire. I just took the needle nose pliers here and cut the wire to about 20 inches. That's going to be longer than my lowest or right longer than my lowest strand that I'm working with. So the strand of beads, most of them when you purchase them are going to be either 6 inches or 16 inches. Our glass pearls and gemstones, they're on 16 inches. So I'm working with 16. I'm going to make my shortest strand right about 16 and my longest strand about 19 inches and those will sit right inside of one another when I'm working with them. So I've cut three strands again about 20 inches and I'm going to connect them to the connectors after the fact. So right now I'm just working on actually designing the strands. I have those daisy spacers handy so we'll just kind of dump out and make a little pile of those 
And I'm not gonna use a ton of those silver daisy spacers, just a little bit to kind of add that silver into the warmer brown tones. This would also look really nice with the tones that were picked to use the antique brass look as well. So I'm gonna start with my biggest strand. Usually the strand that is the lowest is the one that you're gonna see the most, although in this case you are gonna see the brighter strand a little bit more. We'll use that to break up the middle. So I'm starting with the eight millimeter strand. I'm gonna cut apart, and just with your wire cutters, you can use scissors too. Just cut those apart, take them off. A little hint, if you know that you want to start grouping them together, is to take them off in multiples and pick up one of your strands and actually add them on at that same time. You can usually string through more than once then at a time. Of course, since I'm doing it on film, it won't do it for me. But there I have two on, so you can create a pattern. What I'm gonna do for this pattern is keep this silver very light and very minimal in it. I'm going to use my whole strand of my eight millimeter glass pearls, stringing onto that 20 inches of the .008 wire. And I'm gonna do five pearls at a time, just stringing right on the wire. Sometimes the glass pearls, because of their coating, are a little bit difficult to get on the wire. You can take a bead reamer or a beading awl and just kind of poke that out a little bit. If you're using stretchy string, sometimes you need to do that, but usually with the wire, you're fine just poking the wire through. I'm gonna add one of my daisy spacers, and then I'm gonna continue on adding more and more of my pearls. Again, the whole pattern is gonna be five pearls, one daisy, and I'm just going to repeat that very systematically throughout the necklace. A lot of times with pearl necklaces, they are very kind of traditional. I tend to wear a ton of freshwater pearls and glass pearls as well. And actually, even though I do tons and tons of bead weaving designs, I tend to only wear them in my ears and on my wrists and just like simple beaded necklaces. So I'm gonna continue again doing this pattern of five one adding five of the eight millimeter brown pearls and then one of the daisy spacers. So I've gotten done stringing the first strand here with the five one pattern here and it's nice because there is an even amount of beads so my pattern worked out exactly. And what I'm gonna do once I'm done that first strand is just put it to the side, open up the bead stopper, and add the wire in. It's nice to add them into a different section of the bead stopper so that way it doesn't accidentally pull out. And I'm just gonna sit that off to the side, grab my next piece of wire that I've had pre-cut that's on my bead stopper, and then grab my next bead in line. Cut that apart and continue on. This one I'm going to do because it is brighter, I'm gonna do a little bit more of that silver look to it to really make it pop. So for this one I'm gonna change my pattern to a 3-1 pattern. And then I think I'm gonna go back to a pattern that's a little bit less silver for my third strand that's gonna be closest to the face. And the six millimeter beads, I'm just gonna continue putting on here this buttercream color with three and then one gonna continue the 3-1 pattern like I'm doing here the whole rest of this strand finish this one and then we'll start on our last strand of that brown iris strand so now I have that second strand done with the 3-1 pattern and I'm just gonna go right back into my bead stopper here on the other side and clip that if you do have six bead stoppers you can also use one on either side I'm just using one and keeping both ends together sitting that to the side with my previous done strand, picking up my last strand, giving that a cut, and I'm gonna go back for this darker strand to my 5-1 pattern. And there is no rhyme or reason to that. That's the fun of doing your own jewelry and designing, is that if you really like the look of silver and you want that to be more dominant, you just add more of the spacers. So you really can play around and design even if you're using the same materials, if you are having friends over and you buy a bunch of materials, you can really change up what it looks like. It always amazes me when we go out to do parties or we've gone to different functions or ladies' nights out where they've pre-selected the beads, how different everything can look, um, even if you're using the exact same products. So again, I'm going back with this six millimeter brown iris now, which has a little bit more gray in it 
than the red that the brown does. And I'm going back to that 5-1 pattern. I'm going to continue stringing that 5-1 pattern, link them up with these other two using our connectors, and we'll be on our way. Now I have all of the strands completely strung, and what I'm gonna do is fit them inside of one another. You wanna make sure at the ends that you're lining them up, so I am gonna be brave and take my bead stopper off one end. And if you do have a bead board, it doesn't fit in the actual film here for you guys to see the whole bead board, but if you have a bead board, this is helpful. This pearl necklace, I don't actually wanna sit so that you can see the difference in strands if you were looking here at the bottom. I don't wanna sit them so they're off plate. I actually want them to be almost right on top of one another. So at the ends, I'm going to use the connectors to connect them and space them out a little bit, but I do want them to sit right inside of one another. Because they all did start out as 16 inch strands, they're pretty much gonna sit right inside of one another without me having to do much work. Some of the inner strands, I might need to take out one or two beads but I did string them all just so I didn't have to go back and add. It's always better, I think, to take away than to add. You get done stringing and the last thing you wanna do is find that one pearl that you pushed off the table somewhere and have to add that. So I'm gonna add in my beads here, make sure that they're sitting nicely inside of one another and get that measurement. Again, I'm not trying to make them sit really graduated on top of one another. I just want them to sit inside of one another. So once I have that measurement figured out and kind of push to my bead stoppers over there, and I want my bead stoppers to line up even, then I can come back to this other side here and take off whatever I need to that's on the side. So I'm gonna take off three of the second strand and four on the third strand, the inner strand. However, I'm gonna make it even on either side. So I'm gonna take off two on each side of my buttercream. So I'm gonna go back and take off two. And then my inner strand here, because the daisy spacers did lengthen it a little bit, I'm gonna take off four of those as well. Because I used less of the daisy spacers in this strand, so it's going to be a little less length than the second strand. Once I have it lined up exactly how I want it to sit, I'm going to grab my crimp beads and also my links. You don't need to reuse the bag. Our bags you can just tear. They have a nice tear to them. And I'm gonna grab out those links. Set two of the links aside. With those extra pearls that you pulled off the end, if you want to, you can make a pair of earrings. If you do want to make earrings and have them be multi-toned, you can even pull bigger ones off at the end and use some smaller ones in the back in order to lengthen that without having to purchase another strand. Once I have them done, I'm gonna line them up and do my links in order, making sure that my middle strand is always in the middle of my link. I'm not gonna worry about um, wire protectors or uh, crimp covers or even a crimping pliers. I'm just gonna keep it really simple. Just do a flat crimp. So I'm just gonna go in here. I have my six crimping or crimp beads out. I'm gonna put on a crimp bead, go through my link, go back through the crimp bead, and this side here, there's a bunch of extra wire showing. I'm not really gonna worry about that because I'll worry about it on the other side where I need to tighten it up. Once I have that wire in there, I'm gonna push it up to the top and just take the pliers here and just give it a nice flat crimp. Move on to the other side and do the other side as well of that same strand. I like to finish all the strands at once. So rather than doing three of one side, I like to finish one at a time. That will then get me the length of that outer strand and then I can work inwards too and kind of readjust and re-see the length as I'm working on it. The second side here, I'm gonna go back to the first side and make sure that extra wire, which is about an inch, is tucked into my pearls push my pearls against one another. I have my bead crimp on there, so the crimping tube. Go back through after going and putting your link on or your connector and go back in then go through one or two pearls, pull the wire out, 
push the crimp bead down next to your beads. That's going to allow you to get a tighter pull. If the crimp bead is up next to your link here, you're not going to be able to pull it as tightly. It's going to always kind of force that extra wire. So crimp bead goes down next to the beads, pull out. I'm just pulling gently that extra wire out of the way. I do want it to have some wiggle room and some turn to it. If you want it to be really flexible, you can even go with a 49 strand point. 018 wire. Give a nice flat crimp. Take my wire cutters, cut off that extra wire. This is the Sparkle Tool Set wire, and I opened the first set of them in the Minnesota store, so they're in mint condition, which is really, really nice. And they actually stay really great too for working with them. They stay in a great condition. They're a little bit more pricey of a tool set, but when you're doing tools, you really get what you pay for. If you're buying a $8 tool set, which is a great for, or tool, which is great for beginners, it lasts for a little bit, but then you need to replace it. Um, the Sparkle tool set does last a little bit longer, which is nice, and it is a Beadalon production of a tool. I'm gonna keep adding the strands here adding the second and third strand on using the crimp beads here at the end. And then I'll show you how we're gonna connect it to the clasp. So I have them all hooked to my crimp beads and I did take off a collection of beads. I was kind of laying it inside. If you have different links and you're not using these same particular pewter ones, the separation of the links a little bit will dictate how they lay. So I did end up taking off a couple extra. I had taken off um, some before and then took off I think three more of my inner strand is what I ended up taking off and what I'm going to actually do is use that 20 gauge wire that art wire if you have a novice you can use just jump rings go right into your class but I'm going to make it kind of a little bit more detailed I'm going to use because I have them two of my six millimeter pearls on either end I've cut three inches of my 20 gauge wire two pieces of those so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my wire and flatten it out and grab my round nose pliers. I'm gonna hold about an inch back and gonna bend my pliers back away from me. That's gonna create a 90 degree angle. I'm gonna bring the wire over to the top of the round nose pliers till it touches. Switch from my top jaw there to my bottom jaw so it's a simple wrist rotation. And I'm gonna take that wire back 90 degrees so I end up with an eye pin. We're gonna coil that eye pin but before doing that I'm going to link it in to my connector. Once I link it into the connector, I'm going to hold with my pliers and coil just two times because I don't want it to be a big, huge feature of it. And again, that's one of those things that's completely up to you. Cut off my extra little piece of wire there. And the three inches is way more than I need. It's just a really good amount to hold on to. Also, the art wire is so inexpensive that if you waste a little bit, an inch here, an inch there, it's not a big deal. I'm gonna start with my darker pearl and then go to my lighter pearl. Put those on my wire. On this first side here, I'm gonna go back to where my um, round nose pliers are pretty large. Leave about a eighth of an inch, eighth to a quarter of an inch Bend my pliers back, go over the top of my round nose pliers, go from my top jaw to my bottom jaw, and I want that loop to be fairly large, so that way my large lobster that I picked can fit inside there nice and easily. If you want to also, you can double that, and all you'll do is take the wire back around and make it just a doubled end, so it makes it doubled. I'm gonna hold that then with my pliers, coil around, once, twice, making it match there at the end. If it gets separated a little bit, you can just kind of pinch it together, cut off that extra wire, pinch down the end of that wire, and that's gonna be my one side completed. I'm gonna to go to the other side then, mimic that, and I'm gonna do this side quickly. If you have trouble doing your eye pins or not knowing how to do it, you can always check out the rest of our YouTube videos. You can also go into a local Potomac Bead Company near you, take a class, get some help from one of the wonderful owners or managers on doing the different designs. Like I said today, I am in the Alexandria, Minnesota shop. We're getting ready to open the store tomorrow. So you can come in, it gives you a nice um, 
start an idea of something that you might want to do and then you can play around with colors and get bold and actually see them. You can also always shop with us online if you don't have a store near you. On this side here, now that I'm done with that little coiled end, I'm going to add my clasp. Just clicking it and I'm going right over that loop, adding that in. I'm holding by my needle nose pliers just because I have them here, but it's also a narrower space. I'm going to do two coils and then I'm going to cut off my extra wire. Once I'm done with that, I'm just going to take my pliers, flatten out that wire a little bit, and I have my necklace completely done. Because we actually kind of designed the ends, you could also wear this piece as a side piece and wear it to the side on your necklace. So using the connector links is a fun, pretty way to make them sit right on top of one another, not be kind of married to a multi-strand clasp and get that nice design with a finished kind of completed end. Again, they come in a four pack, so you can also then take those, take some of your extra pearls, grab some head pins or just use some of that 20 gauge wire and make an actual pair of earrings with your other set that they would look nice kind of hanging down from it. And again, a nice simple yet elegant three strand pearl necklace using eight millimeter and six millimeter pearls. The glass pearls are super, super cost effective, you know, ranging from three to five dollars a strand. And you get this beautiful necklace to wear to all different, all different occasions. Both you can make it classy, you can make it funky by adding different metals in, kind of varying up and adding gemstones and pearls. But this is gonna hang right on the wall near our glass pearls here in the Alexandria store to promote and advertise kind of what you can do with the glass pearls. Again, it's a great idea for a ladies night, kind of um, wine and bead night. You can either come to one of our stores, join us for a wine and bead night, make a beautiful piece like this, host one yourself or create a party and come take a class and we will teach you how to do this and different techniques as well. Again, if you can't get into one of our locations, which you can visit potomacbeads.com to check out where those are located, you can always watch the rest of our YouTubes to get ideas and you can subscribe, which the subscribe button and a list of materials is gonna be right under this video, right below in a dialog box. You can show more and I'll have links to all of these products as well. Again, you can do more interaction with us by posting on our Facebook page, giving us feedback for your designs and things that you like as well. So thanks a lot for sticking with me, having fun making this triple stranded pearl necklace, and enjoy the rest of your days, and hopefully we'll see you in the Alexandria, Virginia store, or the Alexandria, Minnesota store. A little complicated with two stores with the same exact city name. Thanks everybody for watching.